Hello friends, God bless you and I wanted to discuss today something that is on my heart which is um, what it means when we say we are serving an unchanging God. God doesn't change. The whole world is changing at a rapid pace. But God doesn't change. His plan, His purpose is never changing. But when we make that statement, what does it mean? What is not changing? And I can tell you that God's characteristic, characteristics doesn't change. His ultimate plan doesn't change. He loves you. He will keep loving you. And He will keep loving and protecting you and providing for you, available for you all the time. That will never change. Whether you do good or bad, He will not stop loving you. What is changing, God communicates with His people, His children, and He changes His plans. Bible is full of the examples. God sent Jonah that proclaim again Nineveh that in three days I will destroy this city. And the people repented. And God did not destroy the Nineveh. He changed his plan. God said to Israelites that I will take you to the promised land. He did. But the people who left Egypt except Joshua and Caleb, nobody entered the promised land. They died in wilderness. It's a whole different discussion. They choose to die. They, they did not trust God. It's a whole different story. As soon as they left Egypt, the third day they said that, I think uh, as soon as they come out, they said that it's better for us to, uh, why we came out? You took us out to die in this wilderness? They were, they, they proclaim on their life way before the spies were sent to inquire about the land. So God changes his plan based on our responses. But he will not stop loving us. And why it is important to understand what God is doing, to understand what God is saying. There is a statement in New Testament, my sheep will hear my voice. It's a statement. There is something inheritance inside us, God has given us, that we can hear God. Think about Jesus' life. His life was so busy. People were crying, oh son of David, have mercy on us. There are people trying to, to touch him. There are peeping, people were jumping on him to just come closer to him. He was always surrounded by people. But then he made this pro profound statement, I only do what my father does. How Jesus, who has given up his divinity while on this earth, never exercises divine power, can see what father is doing. In chaotic lifestyle, he was able to see what Father is doing when He healed the people, when He blessed the bread, when He turned water to wine, every miracle, when He walked on water, every miracle He did what my Father does. How? He was seeing and hearing what Father is doing through the Holy Spirit. And when we give our life, God give us the Holy Spirit. But why it is so important for us to constantly hear what Father is doing, is, uh, saying and see what Father is doing because it can change the trajectory of our life. And I wanted to bring an example of Abraham. God told Abraham that sacrifice your son. Now, Bible doesn't say how old, the, how old Isaac was when he was about to be sacrificed, as God has said. 
A scholar believed that he must be a teenager or in a, uh, or uh, more than teenage years. Why? Because the journey was three days and he was able to walk three days. And when they were c climbing the mountain, he carried the wood on his back. So he was, he was old enough to carry the load. He also asked Abraham, the father, there is a fire and there is wood, but where is the sacrifice? So he was well aware he was not a baby. He knew how the sacrifice is being offered. And all this time while walking for three days and climbing the mountain, and when Abraham tied his son and put, it, put him on the, on, the, on the wood to offer him as a sacrifice, I believe as a father, there must be a tear in his eyes. He must be so grief stricken I don't know whether there was any communication, verbal communication between father and son. But I can tell you, Isaac was looking to his father, Abraham, and he must be thinking, his eyes might be saying, Father, are you going to kill me? Are you? Or Abraham must have tears in his eyes. And he was like, I'm going, to, I'm going to offer my son. My point is, he was in extreme grief and agony. Now, if he would not be able to see and hear God, what could have happened? In his grief and so much pain, emotional pain, Still, he was able to hear what God is saying. Don't hurt your son. And Isaac was saved. What if he would have overcome with his grief and pain and would not have heard what God is saying? God speaks all the time. In our good time, in our bad time, in the time we are running out of tears when we are so down, when we are so grief stricken, those times also God is speaking. And it is important for us to hear what God is saying. It is a moment my moment. God can change his plan, how we respond. God told Moses, that stand still and I will fight for you. And the next moment he said, tell the Israelite to, to walk towards the water. Moses could have said, Lord, you just told me, stand still. And now you are telling me to walk. But it was a constant communication. God responds how we respond to his, uh, his saying. And he adjusts his plans for our good. So my friend, I don't know what you are going through right now. I don't know what situation you are in, but I can encourage you. If you have given your life to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. You will be able to hear him. You will be able to see what he's doing. The question is, in our grief, in our pain, we need to ask, Father, show me what you are doing. Father, tell me what you are saying and we will be able to hear and we will be able to come out the situation that looks so desperate. I hope God has blessed you today. Thank you.